Welcome to Shred Show. I'm Chris, and this is the internet's most stoked surfboard show. Big shouts out to Stephen in Florida, Willow in Margaret River, Carlos in Portugal, Joseph in Nova Scotia, John in England, Uhart in France, Adrian in Spain, Nico in Argentina, and Scooby Doo somewhere in Australia. Is that your real name? You all asked for the V2 shortboard by Lost. This board has its roots deep in the V2 rocket, which is an interesting board because Chris Ward does airs on it with about as much effort as it takes the rest of us to eat a slice of pizza. And also because of the way that V2 rocket evolved from one of the main boards responsible for the shorter, wider craze that started a few years ago, the rocket. Now the relationship between those two other boards, the newer V2 rocket and the original rocket, is really interesting because it teaches a lesson in how we sometimes balance opposites when designing surfboards. For example, the V2 rocket decreased its tail width from the original rocket through using this wing and compensated for that newly narrow tail by widening its nose. At the same time, the V2 rocket lowered tail rocker slightly from what the original rocket had and balanced that by increasing the nose rocker. In short, when a shaper is evolving one surfboard model into its next iteration and they make one change to half of the board, they often make the exact opposite change to the other half of the surfboard. Those changes to the original rocket that created the V2 rocket are really important because they created what Matt Biolas calls Lost's best hybrid and because that V2 rocket created the starting point for this board, something that at first glance looks nothing like a hybrid. This V2 shortboard first got a lot of attention when Chloe Andino wrote it throughout the clip you're watching now, which we'll link down below. It was created by Noah Alani and Jacob Vanderwerk, and it's been viewed nearly 50,000 times on Vimeo. It shows Chloe going nuts on a V2 shortboard in the sort of waves most any surfer has access to, so check that out. I really wanted to film this board before putting a pad on it because I really like rubbing it right here. You can't really see it, but if you look up close, and give it a good feel in a surf shop, you notice a very slight concave running on either side of the stringer as it runs down the center of the board, creating what's basically an arch support right back here on the center of the tail. It's worth rubbing up because you don't just feel an upside down V on the deck where there would just be a steep taper down to the rails from the stringer. You actually feel foam scooped out of the deck through here and through here. This gives you more secure footing and control for your back foot than you would have if there was nothing on the deck of your surfboard and it acts moderately in the same way that an arch support on your tail pad would work. Possibly it was inspired by Lost Rider Mason Ho, who is more likely to paint traction pads on his boards than actually use them, but that's just speculation. Single concave, continuing as a single, no sign of a double concave anywhere in sight, just single concave heading through the fins. Look up close if I can angle this right and you'll see a single concave running all the way through the fins out the tail. With a single concave on a shortboard like this, that's usually a hint that the board is not made for the absolute bottom of the wave spectrum because double concaves are usually a bit more effective at creating a bit of slide and rail to rail action in weak surf where a single concave like this, especially through the tail, is commonly thought to benefit from the power that a bigger wave provides because a bigger wave will put force behind you and it's easier to get a single concave off of its tracks and initiate a turn easier without the help of a V or a double concave or other design elements that help a board get rail to rail easier when there's not a lot of force behind it. Looking at the rocker, we can see a very small amount of bend coming from the center of the board moving up towards the nose, with a lot of nose rocker curve happening up in the last 12 inches or so. This rocker through this section of the board looks built for speed and ease of paddling, with this area of the nose rocker designed to prevent purling in drop-ins. It probably tells us that if you're the type of surfer who does a lot of surfing on rail where you're sinking your rail and doing tight rebounding turns, you may want a board with more rocker through this area of the board to help create a cleaner, tighter line when you're on rail. But if you're the type of surfer who's not really on rail that much and you never notice the way that a wide nose or a low nose rocker measurement gets in the way of your aggressive surfing, then you'd likely find this really helpful because of the way that less rocker through this part of the board generally just makes surfing a short board easier. Compared to something like a whiplash, this board obviously has less tail rocker, which would likely make this board feel more drivey beneath your feet in turns with less of that flick in the pocket and up in the lip that more tail rocker would give you. Compared to most lost boards, this board probably still has more tail rocker than what you would expect, though if you compare this to most short boards that you would find in your local surf shop, I would still call this a moderate to even low amount of tail rocker. Looking at the rails, you can tell up close that they're possibly slightly more full than average, but you can still tell up close that this is still a very modern rail with a lot of taper coming down off of the deck. 
If I can make this stop wiggling, you can kind of get an idea for how much that still tapers down on the rail. Since shapers often design their boards with their signature fin templates in mind that they also designed, you may really find this Mayhem set a really good starting place in this board. Looking at this fin set, we learn a lot by noticing what we don't see. For example, line up all three fins like this and you don't find that the thruster fin is any smaller than the leading two fins, which tells us that in terms of how the size of each fin relates to each other in this set, they're not designing it for the extra slide and release that comes at the top of a wave from having a thruster fin smaller than the leading two fins. Instead, this set would give the standard hold and stability you would expect from having three fins all of equal size. We also don't see or feel any concave on the stringer facing side of the leading two fins, which tells us that in terms of the foil of these leading two fins, they are not designed for excess speed at the expense of immediate control, which is what standard flat sided fins give you in the leading two boxes of a thruster. And lastly, we don't see any dense black carbon laid up at the base of any of these fins, which would give extra drive at the expense of liveliness and flex, which is what this honeycomb gives you more of when compared to the stiff properties of carbon. These three things show us that this fin set doesn't seem like it was designed to be really good at one thing at the expense of something else. For example, the carver fin is made to perform excellently in long drawn out turns on point breaks at the expense of tight pivot in beach breaks where the reactor would really excel. In short, this fin set creates a mix of averages for acceptable performance nearly anywhere that you surf so that you can have fun in most waves that you find without switching fin sets at the beach during a surf check. Having said that, Lost seems to design most all of their fins with just barely less sweep than what you would consider average, instead creating a template that is slightly more upright than what you would consider the norm. This means that if you're used to surfing boards with more tail rocker than what this board has, you could add in more of the pivot that you're used to and make the board feel more familiar with this set of fins. Or you could double down on the increased drive that you might feel on this board with something like the accelerators or the carvers. As is often the case, the part of the world that this board was designed in gives us a big hint as to what waves it'll perform best in. Not only was this board created and initially tested in California, but most of the remarkable success that this shape has had in contests has been here in the Golden State, mostly at Newport Beach, Huntington, and Oceanside, with one win at trestles coming as well. This is likely due to this shape having a very low rocker up in this part of the board here with a little bit more width forward and back, all wrapped up in a shorter package than boards like the Whiplash or the Scorcher. That all helps this board excel in the sort of California waves that often get dumpy and fun, but less often get super tight and bully. Here we see Evan Geiselman surfing this board in pretty flat, open-faced beach break. It looks really fun, but definitely doesn't have the sort of tight, bully pockets that would likely call for more outline curve and rail rocker than what the V2 shortboard has. What's really exciting about this shape is that much of the popular lost shapes like the RV, bottom feeder, and the rocket seem to be designed in part using lessons that lost has learned from making high performance shortboards for a lot of the best surfers on the planet. But this board seems to have moved in the opposite direction, taking lessons from a popular hybrid that's fun for even average surfers and using that to inform the design of a very high performance shortboard. I think this board has probably surfed best at about the same length as you are tall or maybe an inch shorter, using either the standard dimensions or the domesticated dimensions to get the volume that you need for your weight and your skill level. I think this board is likely most fun in waves waist high to even a couple feet overhead, but it probably really shines in about the chest high to one foot overhead range. And while advanced surfers seem to really like it, I think that it would especially excel for people right on that line between intermediate to advanced. Now Shred Nation to possibly win 35 American dollars to spend at Surfride's online store, drop a comment below on YouTube telling us your weight, skill level, and volume range. Also tell us what your everyday shortboard is. At the end of the week, we'll pick one of you to send this gift card to, to put towards anything you want from a new pair of board shorts for summer to even your very own V2 shortboard. Shred Nation, that's it for this episode. If you have ever surfed the V2 shortboard or any other boards by Lost, please tell us what you think in the YouTube comments below. We hope the waves are fun wherever you call home and we will see you soon on Shred Show. <laughs>